All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here on scale drawings. Pretty awesome. Got my little scale there. Uh, not that kind of scale. How about this kind of scale? Fish scale? Nope. Turns out there's lots of scales. We're not going to look at a, a scale, a weight scale, a fish scale. Definitely not looking at dragon scales, although that is a scale drawing. How about scales on music? Nope, not music class. There it is. We're looking at a scale like this. Something is scaled down or scaled up. We're going to enlarge things or shrink things today. Should be pretty awesome. Let's take a look, and it all comes back to this scale factor idea. So we got to get really, 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 really good at scale factor, and then this will be uh, no problem for us. So here's my original triangle right here. Uh, six, nine, and 10 are the sides. What I'm going to do, if I give you the scale factor, so before I was giving you two triangles, uh, and you'd find the scale factor. Now I'm just going to give you the scale factor. So let's say I want to make this twice as big. So we could make a proportion out of this. This is all proportional. I love proportions. Proportions are so good. We can say like, hey, if I want to find this side, I can use a proportion. But do I need one really? If I'm scale factoring of 2, what's 6 going to turn into? It's going to turn into 12. So you could easily say like something like, hey, I know the scale factor is 2. 2 is to 1 as what? as what number is to six. Like this would totally work, but it gets tricky to see like, does the six go top or bottom in this case? So I don't really use the proportion here. I just say, hey, it's twice as big. So 10 turns into 20, nine corresponds to 18. I kind of stay away from the proportion in this case. It stays twice as big. It's proportional, so it actually goes back to like, remember those equations, y equals kx, remember those? This is like our constant of proportionality. I say, hey, one triangle is twice as big as the other. So I'm just times in it by two. Awesome. So how about this? Can I do um, fractions? Sure, I know we all love fractions. Let's do the same thing. So now when I take my original, go back to the original, bring them down here, I'm in a scale factor of one third. What does that mean? It's getting smaller. So if it's less than one, you're actually shrinking. Above one, you're growing. So what do I gotta do here? I just gotta take all my sides and times it by a third. So I'm gonna take six and times it by one third. I'm going to take 10 and times it by one third. And when I find the bottom, I'm going to take 9 and times it by one third. So that's how I'm going to find the sides. I'm just going to straight up multiply. What is 6 times a third? It's 2. Uh, 10 times a third is 10 thirds. And 9 times a third is 3. If you are a big decimal kind of person, if you like to get decimally with it, just make sure you write something like 3.3, repeating forever. You need that bar on top for it to be right. Either one of those is coolio. Awesome. How about this one? What if like seven fourths? I'm like, yeah, I don't really know. If remember, fractions are decimals, so you can just take seven and divide it by four. Sometimes it's easier to work with a decimal for all the decimal lovers out there. Uh, that really is just one point seven five. So if you prefer the decimal, no worries. Now I can easily see, hey, it's above one, so this is actually an enlargement. So there's the original; it's the same, uh, but I'm going to make it one point seven five bigger. So not quite twice as big. One point seven times five is big. And again, how am I going to find the sides? Just multiply them all up. I'm going to take 6 if I want to find the side, times it by 1.75. All day, yo. We got 10 times it by 1.75. We got this bottom side, 9 times 1.75. So you can get after it with a calculator. You can say, hey, what is 6 times 1.75? Boom, there it is. We've got 10.5. All right, let's finish this out. We've got... I don't think I need, uh, what was the bottom one? 9 times 1.75. So what is 9 times 1.75? 15.75. There it is. And 10 times that will be 17.5. You just move the decimal over one. So here, uh, what was that? Sorry, I was trying to circle it. Here are my sides, 10.5, 15.75, 17.75. So I scaled up all the sides using the scale factor. So don't use a proportion, straight up multiply on those. Now let's get back to the proportion. You're like, what, why? Well, you don't have to, but I pre way prefer it, way prefer it uh, when we're talking about word problems. And here's why. So I've got this replica uh, model. Of, here's the real Corvette, and here's the replica model that like say somebody's building. So here's the key. It's 1 18th of the scale of the real one, or sometimes you'll see it as this ratio, 1 to 18. So it's a ratio or that fraction. So if the real convertible is 63, uh, inches wide, so the width of it is 63, what is the width of this little guy up here? How wide is that thing right there? So this one I do like to do a proportion. Why? Well, one is to 18, and if I'm gonna label this, what's on top? That's gonna be my model. 
or my drawing or whatever. This is like the small part. This is the model. And what is this? This is the real life. So on bottom will be real life. So now it makes great sense to say, hey, one is to 18 as what? Well, now I'm giving you 63 inches. So what is that? That is the real car. There it is right there, real car. So it definitely goes on bottom. And then I'm looking for the top. So in this case with the word problems, please make yourself a little proportion. Do a little cross multiply action here and solve. We're gonna say 63 equals 18x. And then divide by that 18 to get our, we're gonna be so good at proportions by the end of this year. Proportion crazy. What is 63 divided by 18? I'm guessing it is not friendly. 63. Divide that bad boy by 18. Oh, it is friendly. Hey, look at that. It is 3.5 inches. So that is the width of this car right here, uh, given the width of the real car. So it's a real replica of the thing. It's to scale. It is the exact proportions as the real thing. Awesome proportional. I love it. Let's do two more word problems, and that's it, yo. Um, how about a map? So we can do little models. We can do maps. Maps always give you some kind of key. So here it is down here. I already circled it, but I'll circle it again. That is the key. So they give you some kind of thing like, oh, what does this mean? So if you measure 1.5 centimeters on this map, it's going to be 400 kilometers in real life. So let's say something like this. Uh, if I measure from Beijing to Shanghai, whoop, straight line. So this distance here turns out to be 2.5 centimeters. Uh, how, how much is that in real life? So again, let's use a proportion. I'm going to say, okay, 1.5 five centimeters on the map is 400 kilometers in real life. So again, just so I can make sure I know what's up, this is on the map. So on top is the map, on bottom is real life, the real life distance. And now let's finish our proportion. So I have to keep map on top, real life on bottom. So I wanna know, uh, or I do know, it's 2.5 from Beijing to Shanghai. That's not real life, that's definitely the map. So that is, the map is 2.5. I want to know what is it in real life. That's it, man. Just set up that proportion. I know once we got that, you guys are good to go. We can say, hey, what is 400 times 2.5? So we can say 400 times 2.5 looks like 1,000. So we're going to say, okay, 1,000, if I cross multiply, equals 1.5. And then let's just finish this out so we have some, a little bit of closure here. I'm going to say divide both sides by 1.5. Ah! 1.5. And what's that going to give us here? We're going to say something like divide by 1.5. It looks like we are got a crazy, not a crazy decimal, but 666.6 6, 6 repeating. So um, that is how many what kilometers. Make sure you label these things. I'm finding the kilometers in real life. Great. Let's check out the last one here, man. This is a definitely now actually making a scale drawing. So I'm going to give you a little graph paper here. And I'm going to give you like a drawing of somebody's house. This is somebody's living room right here. So there, again, there's going to be some kind of key. One little length or width of this box, one little line. That one little line there is five feet long. So what are the dimensions of this living room in real life? Well, let's count it up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten units right here. It's If you count those, it's ten units wide. So we can say, hey, one unit is to five feet as what 10 units is to how many feet? So again, just make sure we're cool. On top are these units of graph paper. And then on bottom is going to be the actual real life. So if I count 10 units, how many is that? So we can just do a quick cross multiply. We can say, hey, one times X is X. Five times 10 is 50 all day, yo. And maybe you didn't need a proportion for this one. You could just say, oh yeah, it's one is the five, so I'm just gonna times it by five. So in this case, you could go without the proportion um, when it's nice and easy like one. Uh, sometimes you can just say, hey, oh yeah, it's five times bigger, so no worries. Awesome, so that's one side. How about this other side? It is one, two, three, four, five. It's five units this way, so this is five units. So again, I'm just gonna times it real quick. I'm gonna say it is uh, 25, so it's five units. Each unit is five feet, that's 25 feet. So I can say the new dimensions are 50 foot by 25 foot. Those are the real life dimensions. That little slash there means feet. Uh, that's the real life delicious. Delicious, ooh, it sounds delicious. Dimensions of the real room. Okay, you wanna add a room off of your living room. So maybe you wanna make some kind of gaming room or something like that. And I want it to be this big. So I wanna draw, maybe I wanna draw down here or somewhere off there. 
off your living room, so I need to draw this. So how can I go back? If this is the real life, remember, go back to your proportion. We said one unit is five feet in real life. So the question is, where does the 15 go? Does the 15 go top or bottom? Well, it's real life, so it goes on bottom. I'm actually looking for the unit. So I can do that for um, the length of it and now the width. Same thing, same unit. One is to five. Now, where's the 18? I know that's real life. 18 and a half goes on bottom. We'll call this Y because it's another dimension. So you can use the proportion. That's great. Same thing, units over real life. Or some people are like, since it's one to five, just divide by five. I know uh, that this is going to be what, 15 divided by five? You can cross multiply and solve, but you're gonna get three units. That's three units of the graph paper. If I cross multiply and uh, solve this one, it's 18 and a half <laughs> divided by five, and you're gonna get 3.7, so that's gonna be 3.7 units. And now I just go over here and draw it. So let's say I'm gonna go, it's the three this way, so that's easy peasy, right? One, two, three. Now 3.7, not so easy. It's gonna be one, two, three, and not quite four. So just do the best you can. I'm just not making it over there. So we're gonna kinda of estimate the best we can when I'm drawing these things. So that is it right there. All about the scale factor. We're doing scale drawings, we're doing scale models, we're doing scales on a map, <clears throat> scales everywhere. Good luck on the mastery check, peace out.